Gentleman from South Carolina is recognized for any questions he may have. Mr. <clears throat> Plone, have you ever seen an installation of a gas water heater or gas stove in a commercial building? A commercial building? Um, no, in my home, but not in the commercial building. The reason this is so serious, you are banning gas stoves. And here's how you're doing it. You're doing it through regulations. <clears throat> Whoever came up with this in the Biden administration needs to get in the field and look at it. Uh, what would you do when you get a call in the middle of the day on a, <clears throat> on a, uh, for a tenant who you, a transformer goes down, no electricity? And the lady, the hair salon, the, and we've had this experience. They don't have hot water. Uh, and what's more, if it stays out to replace a transformer, it takes time. And um, what would you do when they demand their money back on the lease? What would I, I'm you not do sure about it? I'm not sure. What is your question again? My question to you, if you've never seen the installation of a gas, any gas furnished now, only in a home, not in a commercial building. Okay, commercial buildings, it it's happens everywhere. What this regulation does is makes it impossible to comply. Because I, I guarantee you what they're going to have is the exhaust system that they're going to put on the manufacturers. And you can't do it, particularly in a high-rise building that you've got multiple floors. I don't understand why you think that making these more efficient would necessarily do that. It's not a it's not efficient at all. The cost to do this, to refit a, an older building that's had gas, a restaurant on the third floor of a building. But again, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm asking you to just, you might want to, you're, you're talking as an expert on this. No, but, I'm not an expert. Let me say this. My understanding is that this is with regard to new gas stoves that would be installed um, three years after the finalization of the rule. So I don't know why you would say that anything has to be retrofitted. You mean when you put in the new one, you'd have to retrofit what? You'd have to retrofit the building. And why would that necessarily be to the comply, case? To comply, you've got to retrofit it. And you don't have access. I mean, this is in real life. You, got, you don't have access to the building to do that. So it may, forces you to go with electricity, which is unreliable in a lot of cases. I mean, it doesn't seem to me that that would be the case, but again, I'm not an expert. Well, I promise you, if you look at it, I mean, go ask somebody that, that has got a 10-year-old building that's had gas stoves uh, in the building, and <clears throat> when they come, because I, I, we've seen it happen in other things. Well, the only thing I can assure you that it's not the intention to say that you can't use a gas stove in any situation and you have to move to electric. That's what I'm not saying the is, case. Uh, Mr. Plum, it is the intention, or either it's ignorance. Either they don't understand what they're, they're doing. This is very serious for your commercial buildings. To have to go in and retrofit to put a put a electric unit in because you can't comply with the gas because the, the walls won't allow it. Can you imagine the cost of going But it's back? not the intention to move to electric. It may not be the, that's what's so frustrating about this administration, Mr. Plum. They're, uh, they don't know what they're doing. They don't understand the mechanics of what they're asking the American people to do. It's not the role of government to do that. And if you ever just take a, in your district, I'm sure, go ask some, uh, you go ask some, some tenants in commercial buildings, not so much residential. That's more, uh, well, it is a big deal with con condominiums, which are high rises, that they have gas stoves. To comply, it's going, I saw somewhere it's $1,000. It's, it's, it's unbearable. It's the cost to retrofit it. Is going, they're going to throw their hands up. You can't do it. Uh, yeah, well, you can do it at a, at a price. That's like saying, price me a car that uh, the driver is safe under any condition. Can you imagine the cost of that? You can design a car that the, uh, the driver is going to be safe. You can put enough steel in it. But what I'm saying, this, this thing has sent shockwaves through the commercial industry anyway. Because we have had, uh, when, when the power goes down, gas-fired units, both from the cooking side and from just the use, I mentioned the hair salon, that's actually happened. When the, when the electricity's down, and uh, they wish they had had gas. But the ones that have it, to, uh, to come back and, and retrofit in buildings that are already existing, 
in a perfect world, you could design a building uh, that I guess would try to comply with, I hadn't seen the details of what they're going to want to require, but just the thought of this is unbelievable that, that they're doing this. To, to, but that's why the bells went off. I know in, in uh, you talk to any commercial building, he'll tell you this is, this is tragic and it's unsustainable and it's, the cost of it would be uh, something that they would probably throw their hands up and say, when, I don't know what they would do. But look into the details of it, and I think you would see in your district the cost to comply would be uh, something they just couldn't do. And I guarantee you, whatever cost savings it is, it's not going to be there. I yield back. Thank you. Gentleman from Texas, Mr. Roy is recognized for any questions.